Two years ago, virtual reality took the world by storm. In 2017, it was time for augmented reality. Now that we're in 2018, what's the state of each of these virtual technologies? Well, we'll answer that today. For Tech Republic and ZDNet, I'm Dan Patterson with Renee Pinnell, the founder and CEO of Kaleidoscope. Re Renee, thanks a lot for your time today. Uh, I wonder if you could let me know a little bit, fill us in a little bit about the technology that powers Kaleidoscope. So, Kaleidoscope is actually pretty low tech. Um, we mostly have built uh, a very, very high level community of artists and industry leaders over the last couple of years. Uh, the industry has honestly been so small that uh, we wanted to make sure that we got the right people in a room before we spent a lot of money and time building any sophisticated technology. We wanted the market to expand to be the right size. Uh, and we, we feel like the industry is getting to a really interesting place uh, where we see the kind of growth that we've all been waiting for uh, reaching a tipping point. Um, and specifically, the thing that has shifted is that last year and certainly heading into 2018, we've seen that um, virtual reality uh, art and entertainment uh, is finally able to be profitable. <laughs> it's not always profitable. It's still more rare to be profitable than not, but it is possible to make a game or uh, something that feels like it comes from the tradition of cinema uh, and uh, turn a profit on it. Um, and we think that's going to be the engine that really drives um, uh, the, the industry uh, to a point where it, it reaches a, a much larger audience. Once little studios can make that loop around where they create something, sell it, and have enough money to make their next project, uh, that's pretty special. So uh, content is uh, always one of the drivers of uh, techno technological adoption, whether it's uh, uh, beta or VHS or augmented reality and virtual reality. What types of content is being created in the space right now and by what types of creators? So uh, it, it runs the gamut from uh, AAA studios uh, and, and major film studios producing content uh, all the way down to uh, super independent, low budget, no budget uh, artists that are producing work. Um, the space that I find to be the most interesting is uh, what I think of as micro studios. So these are typically uh, studios that have uh, five or so people that uh, work at them. Um, and that number and that size is really special. Um, it's just enough people where you can make content that's really deep and rich and beautiful and at a high quality. Um, but because you only have roughly five, six, seven, eight people working at a studio, your costs are, are low. Um, and that brings it into this sweet spot where you can produce content at a low enough price point uh, that you can turn, turn that profit. When you're a large studio, like a AAA studio, it's actually I think harder for them to be profitable with these projects. And a lot of the work that's being done is just being propped up by the five big companies that are heavily invested in the space and are uh, you know, shoveling money into content um, as a way to uh, you know, make sure that the, uh, the, you know, the market succeeds, uh, this whole experiment of VR succeeds. Uh, but these little micro studios are, I think, the first ones that are able to, to really uh, have a business model that makes sense. Um, so that's why I'm most excited about that size uh, and, and that uh, type of type of artist. And what's the state of VR and AR adoption right now? Who's driving consumption? Uh, in terms of the HMDs, the, in terms of the actual hardware? No, in terms of the consumers, is it a consumer audience? Is it a business audience? What are the primary drivers of VR consumption? I would say, uh, I mean, there's there's a whole business to business side of VR and AR, especially AR um, and industrial side. Uh, to be totally transparent, I I don't uh, focus on that that side, so I couldn't say which side is is bigger. But in terms of uh, the consumer entertainment side, uh, it's still uh, driven by gaming. Um, in terms of where most of the money is being spent. Uh, but what we're starting to see is a lot of projects that um, are made with the same tools as games. So Unity, uh, Unreal being the two biggest, uh, and have some of the mechanics of games, but also aren't quite games. They're something else. They're uh, 
interactive narratives, experiential things um, that uh, that are sort of this new genre, this new this new area that I feel like is the most interesting because it uh, feels native to the the medium. All right, um, Renee. Renee Pinnell, uh, founder and CEO of Kaleidoscope. Renee, if you were to advise a company this year who is experimenting with the AR and VR space, uh, what are, are the best places to spend your time and resources? I would say uh, focus on projects that uh, are, if, if you're, if you're, you know, a, a company that's trying to make content in the space, my my big high level recommendations would be uh, focus on budget budgets that are between a couple hundred thousand dollars and a million dollars. That's really the sweet spot for for budgeting a project. Um, definitely focus on uh, uh, projects and content that is real time interactive. So use a video game engine. Uh, I think that's where. Uh, uh, the most profitable projects come from. Uh, I would say uh, focus on run times that are, are longer. Uh, gen in general, we see the industry moving towards longer, deeper, richer experiences. So if it's uh, more of a linear project, I'd say focus on something that's around an hour's worth of content. Uh, if it's more coming from the gaming tradition, make sure that it's at least uh, you know, two, three, four hours of gaming content. Um, so that's sort of the size and scale and scope of, of the projects that I would recommend uh, someone tackle because um, those, those are the ones that I think will be most profitable.